afternoon, fellow constitutionalists, and welcome to the Monday edition of the Dan Columbus Show. I'm your host, Dan Columbus, your constitutional warrior fighting for your right just to be an American. It is January 22nd in the year of award 2018. Remember, we're a hyphen free, PC free zone. God is still in control and he does love you. And I'm broadcasting from the Hemlock Studios here in the beautiful central Susquehanna Valley in the great Keystone State. And boy, <laughs> do I have an episode loaded up for you, folks. Uh, I named this episode the Schumer Shutdown. Who are they protecting? And one thing I did is I went back into my archives, uh, my show notes and everything, and I pulled up a bunch of articles about uh, dreamers, about uh, immigration, and how DACA has affected the country and everything. And so I'm going to have them in the show notes page, but I'm not, I'm not actually going to touch on them too much. Uh, I'm going to have them in the show notes page, so if you're curious about them, they date clear back to 2015, you know, a couple of years ago. I'm going to deal with what's in front of us today uh, about the Dreamer and the DACA thing and why the Schumer shutdown is protecting these folks and, uh, and, and exactly who these folks are. And I'm not saying every last one of these Dreamers is a criminal, but I haven't seen anywhere yet where we actually vetted all of these Dreamers either completely and so that's a huge problem it's a huge problem for me it's a huge problem for the country if we're talking about giving dreamers amnesty we need to know first who you know who they are if they committed any crimes you know for upstanding citizens but and we'll get into this a little bit more but if we if if an amnesty deal is to take place we first have to get rid of chain migration the visa lottery uh, you know, just secure the border, internal security on the country, e-verify. You know, we've got to strengthen all that before, before we ever even talk about any type of path to citizenship or amnesty for the Dreamers or the DACA children. Now, like I said, you've got to end that chain migration. Just because the child uh, becomes a citizen doesn't mean that's automatic for the folks to become a citizen either. I know that's going to be a sticking point for Schumer and his, uh, his folks there, but folks, we, we really, really got to do some things before we deal with these, and they are illegal immigrants. Even though they've been here since they were young, uh, they're still not documented. They're still not American citizens. A, a lot of them have gotten resident status, but that's only resident status. They're not citizens, and... and I don't think they should jump ahead of a lot of people who's waited years and years and years to get into this country. I really don't. Today's show is being brought to you by my favorite soft drink, Rocky Mountain High Brands. Now, they're not paying for this advertisement, but uh, this is the official drink of the Dan Clement Show. And uh, full disclosure, I do own stock in the company. And, and folks, if you have body aches and pains, and this is not a medical endorsement, this is just I found this to be true for myself. Maybe you can find it true for yourself. These drinks are infused with 100 milligrams of hemp oil. And they're fantastic drinks. They got uh, different flavors, including iced tea, uh, mango, berry, energy drinks, uh, coconut lime energy drinks, uh, and lemonade. And they're fantastic. They got power shots. They got protein bars that are infused with this. They got Eagle Spirit water. That's, a, that's an alkaline water. They have a whole slew, and you can get all these on Amazon.com. And again, they are the official drink of the Dan Clement Show. Today's daily Bible reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 12 through 13. Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who had bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, It is written, My house shall be a call to house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. And this is what was happening with uh, the, the whole temple mound and inside the temple, inside the, the, the court of the Gentiles that was leading up to the temple and everything. And, and the other courts, they, they turned it into a den of thieves. And Jesus Christ wasn't having none of it. He was not having none of this. And he drove them out. Today's quote mill comes from Frank Peretti. God does not waste an ounce of our pain or a drop of our tears. Suffering doesn't come our way for no reason, and he seems especially efficient at using what we endure to mold our character. If we are malleable, he takes our bumps and our bruises and shapes them into something beautiful. Remember that, folks. 
Today's short Bible lesson comes from uh, Al Shannon over at biblicalproof.wordpress.com. And I like this a good one. He puts, he puts out memories, both sweet and bad. He talks about how, how memories are a blessing. And both, of, both the good and the bad are blessings to us. And that God has blessed us with having these memories and that. So, uh, you know, it's a good article. I encourage you to go over and read this. Now, if you, as you're going into the show notes page, well, I'll have post up a little bit later on this, this evening. I have a PDF in there, Undocumented Immigrants, U.S. Citizens, and Convicted Criminals in Arizona. This is by John R. Lott over the Criminal or Crime Prevention Research Center. And he did this study in Arizona and got all these facts put together and put, put it in this white paper. And I'll have a, a link to the PDF uh, for that white paper. And this is... This is directly related to, and let me get over here and set this up. Um, make sure I'm on the right one here. Okay. It's actually both of these, uh, both of this is, uh, this PDF is in a Breitbart.com article and also a, um, uh, another one from um, Daily Caller. Let's go to the Breitbart.com article to begin with. And, and look at that one there. It says, report. Dreamer age illegals have crime rate double young Americans. This is by Neil uh, Munro. And this is posted January 16th of this year. A DACA age illegals commit crimes at twice the rate of young Americans, says a comprehensive summary of crimes and convictions in Arizona during the past 32 years. The report puncture... Or... Yeah, punctures claims by pro-amnesty advocates that young dreamers, dreamer illegals are vital to U.S. industry and civic life and indicate that any amnesty will ensure that many more crimes, including murders and rapes, will be inflicted against Americans and illegal immigrants, including Hispanics and blacks. The report says, and again, I have the link to the PDF in the show notes page. It will be the first link in the, in the show notes page. Unfortunately, if the goal of DACA is to give citizenship to a particularly law-abiding group of undocumented immigrants, it is accomplishing the opposite of what was intended. As Table 8 shows, DACA age eligible und undocumented immigrants are 250% more likely to be convicted of crimes than their share of the population. Uh, those too old for DACA status are convicted at a relatively low rate, 45.7% more than their share of the Arizona population. The summary of the report titled Undocumented Immigrants, U.S. Citizens and Convicted Criminals in Arizona says, using newly released detailed data on all prisoners who entered the Arizona State Prison from January 1985 through June 2017, we are able to separate non-U.S. citizens by whether they are illegal or legal residents. These data do not rely on self-reporting by criminals. Undocumented immigrants are at least 142% more likely to be convicted of a crime than other Arizonans. They also tend to commit more serious crimes and serve 10.5% longer sentences, more likely to be classified as dangerous, and 45% more likely to be gang members uh, than U.S. citizens. If undocumented immigrants committed crimes nationally, as they do in Arizona, in 2016, they would have been responsible for over 1,000 more murders, 5,200 rapes, 8,900 robberies, and 25,300 aggravated assaults, and 26,900 burglaries. The report was prepare, prepared by John R. Lott, Jr. at the Crime Prevention Research Center in Alexander, Virginia. He told Breitbart News. The data there shows the convictions for everyone who entered the prison system from January 85 through June of last year. It shows that certain groups are convicted much higher rates than their share of the population, roughly 75% of the crime committed by undocumented immigrants or illegal aliens is committed by those who are 15 to 35 years of age. Now that's important when we're talking about DREAMers and DACA because that's the, the, the dreamer age here. Legal, I'll read on. Legal immigrants are very different from legal immigrants, he said. Legal or illegal immigrants are being convicted at a high rate, 
compared to their share of the population. Legal immigrants appear to be fairly law-abiding and are convicted of low rates compared to their share of the population. <gasps> who'd, have, who'd have thought? People who come here legally follow the law to get in this country legally because America is one of the, one of the few countries or a handful of countries that actually abides by the rule of law or, you know, that, that that's our goal, uh, and they're law-abiding. Who, who, who'd have thought, right? <laughs> I read on the database used for the report does not describe the race or ethnic identity of the victim, but national data shows that most victims are part of the same group as their criminals, he said, Lot added. What tends to happen across all different racial groups is that criminals are of the similar race as the victim. The crime literature shows the, that victims tend to be similar to the perpetrators of the crimes. Obviously, a larger share of the victims will also be undocumented illegal aliens. And, and it's, this is a good read, it's a good report. And, and I just want to read a couple more paragraphs here. Unsurprisingly, polls show that many legal immigrants want stronger border security. In 2014, for example, a pro-amnesty poll funded by Mark Zuckerberg showed that 78% of Hispanic respondents supported substantially increasing security among U.S.-Mexican border. Asked to rebut likely criticisms of the crime report, Lott said he had seen few criticisms so far. I don't know what people will say. It seems like a straightforward set of numbers, he said. However, he noted that the report does not include any data about unreported crimes. That raises the possibility that a lot of crimes are not reported. Looking at convictions might provide you with an underesti underestimate of crime these illegals have committed. Lots report sheds more light on the 3.25 million dreamers who would be the beneficiaries of an amnesty now being pushed by Democrat politicians, business business first GOP legislatures and cheap labor business groups. So there are right there are the, the sum total of the amnesty groups we're talking about. Like I said, he goes further in there. It's a rather lengthy article in that, but i uh, give you the flavor of that and let you look at that for yourselves. Now, uh, this other article by Daily Caller sort of backs up what uh, Breitbart was saying. Arizona Dreamers are 8% of the prison. And this is by Will uh, Rakel, and uh, he's, a, he's a, uh, a staff writer over at the Daily Caller and an uh, immigration and foreign policy reporter. Younger illegal immigrants in Arizona make up a far larger percentage of the state's prison's inmates than their share of the population uh, would suggest, according to a new analysis. While illegal immigrants ages 18 to 35, a group immigration activists called DREAMers, are about 2% of the Arizona population. They are almost 8% of the prison population. The overrepresentation by a factor of four shows that younger illegal immigrants in Arizona are far more likely to commit crimes than U.S. citizens or legal immigrants of similar age, says John Lott, president of the Crime Prevention Research Center. Even after adjusting for the fact that young people commit crimes at higher rates, Young undocumented immigrants commit crime at twice the rate of young U.S. citizens, Lott wrote in a report published Thursday. These undocumented immigrants also tend to commit more serious crimes. Now, we sort of covered all that in the, in the last report from Breitbart uh, that uh, Neil Munro had penned. And folks, these are the stats that you don't hear from the lamestream media. You don't hear these from the pro-amnesty folks out there and the open border folks that don't want a wall down there. Um, I, I heard back from uh, Joe Healy, the mayor of Oak Harbor, Ohio. And, you know, I, I mentioned something in an article about, you know, well, we need to secure our southern border with a wall, with whatever, right? I said years ago that we should put our military bases on the southern border and, and sort of interlock them. <laughs> <laughs> sort of interlocking as in, in the military and in, in the, in the infantry we're, ta we're taught about interlocking fields of fire. Well, we need to do that with the with bases down there. That would deter. But barring that, a wall would, would do fine. And, and, and Mr. Healy, who's an infantryman and he, he, he's a, a combat veteran from Iraq and Afghanistan, give him kudos for that, uh, said, well, th that wall wouldn't secure anything. 
And I, I thought it was surprising coming out of a combat veteran who hides behind walls when they're in their home compounds. They have walls up there to protect them, sort of like a, a fort. That, that secures the base. Now, it doesn't secure it completely, but it, does it give it a, 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 a vast, vaster superior security than without the walls? Yes. You know, you can lob mortar fire or artillery fire into the base behind the walls. Okay. But we're not talking about, you know, we, we don't have Mexicans lobbing, as far as I know, artillery and mortars across the border. We, we, we don't have that. And in, or, and in order for us to be a country, we, we need to be able to secure our borders and know who's coming in and, and uh, be able to control that. So Chuck Schumer and the Democrats shut down the government over these dreamers, over this DACA issue, which first and foremost should never have been tied to an appropriations bill. Never. And this has been a trick. This has been a trick in a lot of the government shutdowns, no matter, and mostly when Republicans are in power in Congress. This has been a trick of the left to try to add these to the to different bills, and then when the Republicans are like, no, let's do that standalone, then they want to shut the government down and then blame the Republicans. And again, this, this shutdown was totally Chucky Schumer's. It, it really, really is. And I, I'm sorry, folks, if, if the Democrats get their nose bent out of shape, there's only 51 Republicans in the Senate. You need 60 votes to pass an appropriations bill. So if you do the math, they're minus nine votes, which were Democrats. So who is being the obstructionist here? And putting Dreamers and, and, and the DACA folks in front of the rest of America. Sorry, that doesn't wash with me. Uh, I'm neither Republican nor Democrat, and I can see plainly that this was a Schumer shutdown. And that's what I've been sharing. <laughs> that's what I've been sharing for quite a while on Twitter and Facebook. I've been putting that hashtag, the Schumer shutdown. And I haven't gotten much criticism over it yet, but, you know, we'll see. Now, here's another report from um, Center for uh, Immigration Studies. 500 ex-DACA criminals and gang members still at large. Will they get amnesty too? This is another issue that needs to be addressed. Now, I didn't realize this. I didn't realize numbers this high. More than 500 individuals who obtained DACA benefits that were later revoked due to criminal and or gang involvement apparently are still living in the country and at large according to statistics provided by USCIS to Senator Chuck Grassley, chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee. These cases are 25% of those who lost DACA status due to criminal and or gang activity as of November 17, uh, 2017. Only about 30% of the ex-DACA criminal aliens have been removed or were in ICE custody as of November 2017. That's a low number, folks. And, and I, I bet you most of them are going to be out in California or in some of these other sanctuary cities around the country. It, it only stands to reason. Because they, they know if they're in a sanctuary city, they're not going to be hauled off to the Hooskow, as it were. According to USCIS, a total of 2,127 individuals had their DACA status terminated for criminal activity and or gang activity as of November 22, 2017. In no more than 3% of these cases did the termination occur merely because of gang involvement. Nearly all the terminations followed criminal convictions or arrests, according to related data, uh, on the USCIS website. Uh, again, USCIS provided the following breakdown of the outcome of the cases of these DACA terminations. Removal from the United States, 562. In ICE custody, 90. Release from ICE custody, 353. No record of removal, detention, or release by ICE, 940. Total, 2,127. Sweet. So we have a huge problem here, folks. We have a few, 500. That's a lot. I, not compared to the population of the United States, but that's a lot. That means there's 500 criminals and gang members still at large out there. You understand what I'm saying? And this is what Schumer and the Democrats are pushing. These are the people they're supporting. These dreamers, without vetting them. 
without vetting them. These are the type of people they're supporting. Now, I'm not saying every single person that has DACA deferment and that we call a dreamer are criminals. I'm not saying that at all. But have we vetted every one of them to the extent that we need to to make sure that they're not going to be a security risk to the United States, that they're not going to, you know, that, that the, the potential for committing crime is very low? I, I don't think we have. And if, if I'm wrong, someone please straighten me out, but I don't think we have. And finally, um, I have this, so I'm going to make another video of this because this one's getting a, a little bit on the long side. But I just wanted to share this with you real quick. The Gang of Six Amnesty Proposal. Like I said, I got. I have another video that I, I'm, I've already got the paperwork started. And all i got to do is record it. And I'm going and to include this in it. But basically, the Gang of Six, or six senators, that got together and made this proposal. And it includes amnesty for millions of illegal aliens. And it, we're talking about not only the children, but their parents. They're not talking about getting rid of any chain migration. Uh, and that's point number two, amnesty for illegal alien parents. Number three, amnesty for illegal aliens who benefited from temporary protected status uh, and token border security provisions. Like I said, I'm going to cover this in another video here about this amnesty bill. It's, 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 it was ridiculous. Uh, a matter of fact, I think it was pretty ridiculous for it to even be uh, proposed by those in the Senate. I, I really do, so... Uh, and, and those six, those six need to be taken to task on that. They really do. Uh, a couple more things, like I said, uh, I have some articles that you're going to find in there. DOJ, we legalized 100,000 illegals by executive action before a court injunction. It's by Susan Jones over at CNSNews.com, posted on March 4th, 2015. DHS Secretary, illegal charged with murder should not have received DACA. And this is by Melanie Arder, uh, April 28, 2015, over CNSNews.com. And then uh, Rubio, Central American leaders say human traffickers use DACA to recruit children to enter the U.S. illegally. By Penny Starr, May 1, 2015, over CNSNews.com. And so th these are articles I shared on the show with you before and had links up and everything. But I, I'm going to put them back in here because these are the people that Chuck Schumer and the Democrats are supporting uh, these dreamers. And again, let me just make this clear. Not all dreamers are criminals. But when the criminal rate of these illegal immigrants is twice that of the same age group as the rest of America, there's a problem. There's a problem that needs to be addressed here, folks. It really does. And the Democrats aren't going to do it. They're really, really not going to do it, folks. Well, folks, this has been the Dan Clements Show. I'm your host, Dan Clements, your constitutional warrior. Remember, if you aim at nothing, you hit it every time. Have a great rest of the day, folks. God bless, and we'll see you on the next video.